Uh, pretty good night, obviously. Competition. Um, quarterback made some nice throws. We, we forced a lot of third down situations for our football team. And uh, we're in the mode now of really trying to become a better team in situation football. And really, a lot of it has to do with our quarterback. Because he's going to be faced with that as a young player. You know, and how we move the chains on third down are critical uh, decision making for him. So now we're in the point where we're not running out of days, but, but days are, are, are lessened by our first game. So I think the guys understand that. They understand that uh, here shortly we're going to be playing football. We have one more night practice, and then we start to the day practices because school's going to start, so that'll be interesting. We added a new player to our football team, uh, and um, we went through a process that all football teams go through and there's, there's a vetting process to this. Not only was I involved in it, obviously Dr. Crow starts with him and Ray. This young man, uh, Jack Jack, had a previous relationship with one of our coaches, AP, who we played for. So conversations got going uh, with AP and, and obviously uh, with Jack and then uh, I was part of those conversations, uh, and uh, there was a lot to be done. There was a vetting process. And we felt, uh, knowing his background and, and taking a hard look at this, that this was a place where we felt that um, he would be given an opportunity. Everyone's not given a second chance. And, uh, in this case, uh, we felt that uh, he deserves a second chance, and we have a staff, and we have a policy around here that uh, we feel like uh, we're in the developing business, especially with young people. And uh, we were going to give this man an opportunity, but he had to do a lot of work uh, before he could even be a part of this and get here. And to his credit, he did. He did. He did what was required. Um, there was consequences uh, for his actions, obviously, and, and he paid for those consequences somewhat. And now he understands what's expected. And um, if that is not the case, and he should falter, and then uh, he won't be a part of the program. And he knows that. So that's where it's at. Uh, eventually, you guys will get to visit with him. At this point, he's not going to talk to anybody. He doesn't need to. Uh, but we'll give him access to you folks uh, when the time comes. And we'll get to talk to this young man. We feel like uh, he is a guy that uh, He's going to get a second opportunity with us. And, uh, he's one of our 100 and I guess we got six guys now, 106 players on this football team that, that can help us. So that's kind of where that's at. Is there anything about your interactions with him that made you comfortable with that? Well, obviously, conversation after conversation, you know, and, you, and, and obviously knowing AP. I mean, AP was the guy that you know, advised me that he wanted to have a conversation with me. And it was, it was one of those conversations. There was not. It was straightforward. It was matter of fact. It was this is what it is, and uh, conversations continued to happen. And then uh, it had to go to parties way above my head uh, to make sure this was going to be okay. And uh, as I said, we have a support staff here where all parties felt like this could be a place where this young man could get his career and, and his life back in order, and uh, you know, be a part of our, our football team, and also be a part of the community because that's what we thrive here to do as student athletes you know we're a big part of our community and if you've ever been around a young man um, you know, he's, he's got a great personality he really does he he fits he, he fits he, he fits uh, went in a meeting today and just kind of sat in there and he's a smart guy too he knows football he, he's, he picks up football pretty quick do you think that's what Dr. Crow wanted to know, kind of the citizenship side of it, that he was going to come here and be a good citizen? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Not only Dr. Crow, Ray Anderson, and myself, mm -hmm. we all felt the same way. Now, he, you know, he, he's in the process of trying to get in shape, and it's going to be, you know, he hadn't done anything for a while because he's been going to taking classes and doing all that stuff. Uh, so uh, we got to get him in shape. That's where he's at right now, and we'll see how long that takes. Potentially, Herm. What could this mean for that position? You have two, three-year starters anyway. Well, I think as you watched this last year, Danny does a great job of the rotation with our secondary. 
know, no one plays 70 plays in our secondary because of what's required to play. I think he's a guy, when he gets in shape, obviously we know his skill set. He's a fabulous football player. And uh, that gives us more depth. That gives us the ability to play a little bit more man coverage. And uh, that's always a good thing when you have good corners that can play man coverage. I mean, I, I, I think that's the way of the world. I mean, especially in football today, if you got corners that can stand out there outside of numbers and defend a guy, you got a chance to be a pretty good defense. So he, he, he has those qualities. Now we got to get him in shape and he's got to, you know, figure out what we're going to ask him to do and, and all that stuff. There's, there's still a long road, but uh, we're glad he's part of the program. Is the return game something that he might be? Well, you guys have seen him play. He's, uh, yeah, he can return now. He's, uh, he's, he, he's a punt returner. And we've got some guys back there already when you think about the guys we have. So um, that's a good thing. He adds, he adds to us. He adds to us. He adds a different dimension. He brings a skill set that, you know, that you try to recruit. And we're fortunate enough that uh, he had a prior relationship with AP and, you know, all the, all the, all the boxes lined up and, and uh, he's here. To have Antonio here and the other Long Beach Poly players, is that part of the thinking that that's going to help him to? A absolutely. And he played with a lot of these guys. You know, he graduated before most of them, but he was in school with them. He played on their team, so they know who he is. So he's, he's in a place where the surrounding is familiar for him. And it's not like a, I know he knows these guys. We, I don't even, I can't even count the many jackrabbits we have anymore. We got a bunch of jackrabbits. Seven. Seven, we need seven jackrabbits. There you go. So it's kind of, a, it's, it's, it's good, it's kind of unique, but uh, it just worked out. And, uh, I think both parties are, are going to try to make this work. Well, Coach, uh, switching subjects, yep. when you think about how um, a lot of the teams, I guess not a lot of teams, but, you know, some teams will play really tough games right out the gate in, like, week one, mm -hmm. and then, you know, some teams get some lower-end teams, and, you know, with the decision to, to pick Jaden to be the week one starter, did that come easier knowing that you guys didn't have to play a top-end team? Well, I'm going to tell you what, this football is a funny deal. Because the last time I checked, um, I look at our schedule. Uh, there's not, not, there's not like this is an easy win. I mean, it's not easy. I mean, I was petrified last year with UTSA, and they walked in there you know, because it's football, football. And uh, I think you got to prepare that way. You know, this team has played uh, a lot of big time programs and have been toe to toe with them. I mean, they they've got a pretty good offense. They're really well coached when you watch them on tape. They got a quarterback that has a lot of experience. They got some pretty good receivers. They're really, they move fast on offense. They don't huddle them I and they go. They wear teams out. Um, you know, you, you, they played Ole Miss and I think at halftime was 7 nothing. They're on the road, so you don't take anybody for granted. You don't, and we won't take these guys for granted. Um, we, we understand they're coming here and, and we understand what it means for them um, to, to play us. And we're the same way though. I mean, we're young. We're a young football team, so we got to get prepared to, to play our, our best game opening day, and that's what you got to do every week. So we don't take anybody for granted. I've never done that as a coach. Okay. One more thing. Isaiah Floyd, is yeah. he, how far has he progressed from He's, From the first year? Oh, yeah. I mean, leaps and bounds. Uh, he comes out of J.C., obviously, and, and it's, it's taken a year for him to try to find his way here. But he's done a nice job. I mean, his running style, you know, in junior college, he was one of those, he threw 100 moves, you know, and could get away with it. Uh, here, when you make a move, then you got to go north and south. And Coach Iguana's done a nice job with him of making him realize you got to go north and south. You got to get yards. All this going side to side doesn't help us. So he's really concentrated on that and done a nice job. And it looks like he's a guy that's really benefited from the weight room work. Oh, no as doubt. As far as strength. Yeah, course, yeah. Yes, he, he's a stronger, uh, he's a tough guy anyway. I mean, you know, when you, you're not the biggest guy, you always feel like you got something to prove, and that's, that, that's what makes him tick. I mean, he's, he's a competitive guy, um, and he loves to compete. And, uh, he's gotten stronger, and he's learned how to run better, too. I mean, he's, he's, he's more of a one cut, and now I'm going north of Styles, so rather than four or five cuts. We could get away with it maybe in J.C., but at this level, you can't do that. How is Darian Butler a better player this year than he was as a true freshman? Well, uh, more practice time, uh, more confident in the defense. I mean, you know, Darren and, and, and Shari and, and Merlin and uh, 
Lole, they were freshmen. They had like, what, 20 practices. And then they were asked to play. I mean, it was completely different from anything they've ever done in high school. And so just the learning the system where they're comfortable, now they're comfortable. I mean, Butler knows where to line up. Merlin, they get guys lined up. I thought they tired a little bit last year because they hit a wall, they hit that freshman wall of, hey, you're playing against seniors and, and, and you know, and, and, and bigger, stronger guys because these guys haven't been in a weight program that much. I mean, Butler, even though he looked strong last year, he was strong, but you look at him now, he's a different guy. So is Merlin, there's a Rashari as well. So the experience of going through a season has helped him, but also the off season. Joe's done a great job of uh, getting these guys in shape and getting them stronger. He wasn't shy about stepping up as a true freshman in a leadership capacity last year, and it seems like he's only taken that to another level this year. Oh, yeah. Have you seen that kind of evolution of him? Yeah. Well, it was expected, and I told him that halfway through the season. Uh, I flat told him, I said, hey, it's going to be your football team. He said, Coach, I got it. I said, just understand that. Next year, like, you're going to be one of the guys that's standing around there. They're going to be looking at you because you've earned the respect of the guys on the football team. You know, and, and that's the way it is. And, hey, look, there's got a lot of young guys. And the freshmen look at those four guys, and they said, these guys came in here and played and helped these, this team win games. We got the same mindset with the freshmen we brought in here. It's like, hey, we're going, we're rolling, we're good. You know, we're going to try to help this team win. So that, that's the fun when, when you have young guys. You think this next group of uh, freshmen helping kind of those, you know, uh, sophomores kind of try to avoid that sophomore slump, knowing that you know their their jobs are. And and we and we talked about it. We we I told them I said just go talk to the guys who were freshmen last year. I had a meeting with all the first year players uh, two days ago, and I told them I said here's the situation. I don't know how you feel? You got those glassy eyes? You're wondering? I said don't wonder. I said you guys are doing great. And I said go just talk to the guys that were freshmen last year. And the guys that transferred in here, you know, go talk to those guys and see how those guys are feeling. They feel the same way you were last year. So just take it for what it is. Just keep working hard and we'll get this thing going in the right direction. You guys are going to be part of it. Thanks, Coach. Right. Thanks, Thank Coach. you. Sure. Appreciate you guys.